Hey, welcome to the show today. This is the second part in our CRISPR series. Today will be a little different than our usual series. It's going to be about a letter rather than a research article. So the difference for those that don't know is that a research article is an original report that leads to substantial advances in, in, in the understanding of a certain field. A letter is a short report that has original research and it's used as a means for other scientists and other researchers to move forward with research. So it's not the conclusion of a research project. It's more so the beginning or getting to the beginning of research. The title of this article today is CRISPR-Cas12 Based Detection of SARS Coronavirus 2 and it was first online on Nature Biotechnology on the 16th of April in 2020. I'm Luke, and I'm Hunter, and you're listening to Epistem, a show where we explore papers in STEM fields and let you know what they're all about. So as you heard in the intro there, uh, today's paper will be discussing a little bit about how you can use CRISPR to detect uh, COVID-19. So if, depending on when you're listening to this, uh, you may not be aware, but the end of 2019 and throughout most of 2020, maybe all of 2020, we don't know yet. Uh, there has been a coronavirus outbreak that has turned into a international epidemic. Turns out there's a possible application of CRISPR in detecting COVID-19. And this is a pretty big deal. There have been a lot of epidemics in modern history, uh, which include HIV, uh, SARS, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, coronaviruses, uh, swine flu, Ebola virus, Zika virus, the list goes on and on. Uh, but an interesting fact about all these is that there are what's called zoonotic viruses, which mean they come from animals. So HIV came from chimpanzees. H1N1 virus, or otherwise known as swine flu, came from pigs. Bats and uh, camels also are sources of a lot of viruses. Uh, Ebola came from bats. And Zika virus is one of the many things transmitted by mosquitoes. With all modern epidemics, the most crucial thing to do is detect when you have the disease or where the disease is in the world. So cheap, accessible, and rapid testing processes are very crucial to stopping epidemics or finding them before they get to an epidemic status. A lot of diseases are tested using serology tests, which are based on blood work. They are fast and don't require much special equipment, but depend on antibodies in the blood for detection. Antibodies may not be detectable for days or even weeks after symptoms in emerge. Another way of testing is known as QRT-PCR, which is reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction. Reverse transcription is the action of using reverse transcriptase, which are enzymes used to create complementary DNA to amplify specific DNA. This amplification can be seen by using fluorescence. By using QRT-PCR, tests can focus on particular regions in the genetic code. Based on the unique sequence of genes of a given virus, Things called guide RNA or gRNA are designed to deliver the Cas enzyme to where it needs to go. So just to recap, viruses are bits of DNA or RNA that embed themselves onto a host's DNA. CRISPR functions as a tool to find, separate, and manipulate specific RNA strands from the virus. The test method that the researchers describe in this paper is called DNA endonuclease targeted CRISPR transreporter, or detector for short. It uses CRISPR technology to detect genes called envelope or e-genes and nucleoprotein or n-genes that are unique to coronavirus. The n-gene indicates COVID-19 specifically, while the e-gene indicates presence of COVID-19 or a similar coronavirus. Your diagnosis depends on which combination of genes are present in your RNA. So if you had both the particular E and N genes present, that would indicate a positive result. And if you had neither, it would be a negative result. But if you had one or the other, it would be something like an unconfirmed positive. There are many advantages to using the detector test. Detector can be performed using nasopharyngeal or oropharyngeal swabs, meaning nasal or throat swabs, respectively. This means that detector uses standard medical equipment and allows for almost every medical facility to perform these tests. Detector results can be visualized on a lateral flow strip, which are tests used to find if there is a specific substance in a liquid. The liquid is run along the test strip, then reactive molecules will show if the test is positive or negative. A common use of the laminar flow strip is a standard pregnancy test. The detector test can be administered on the spot and will have results within 30 to 40 minutes. 
Now this test is still research in the works. It's not a finished product yet and further testing will be needed for it to be verified. But major pandemics would be much easier to spot and manage quickly with easily accessible testing such as the mouth and nose swabs we mentioned. Also, using CRISPR enables you to tune your test to a particular virus by identifying which combinations of genes will be present in an infected host. So it was a pretty short episode today, and uh, correspondingly we've got a pretty short nerd notes section for you. So one thing I'd like to point out about the gene testing uh, is in addition to the E and the N genes, they also tested with a control gene uh, that would just indicate whether or not the test failed. So this gene should be present in any living human. So naturally, if they can't detect that gene, if the test says that gene isn't there, they know something went wrong with the test and they can't trust the results. One thing I found very interesting about this scientific letter was the limit of detection in the medical field. Limit of detection is the smallest quantity of something that is distinguishable from the total absence of that thing. So to describe this better in an example, if something has a limit of detection of 10 copies per microliter, while something else has a limit of detection of 20 copies per microliter, the test that has the 10 copies per microliter would be able to find a higher count value of viruses or whatever it's testing for compared to the 20 copies per microliter per sample. So we hope you enjoyed the show today. If you'd like to reach out to us with any questions or comments, you can reach us at epistem.pod at gmail.com. That's E-P-I-S-T-E-M period P-O-D at gmail.com. And if you really liked it, you can support us on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash epistem. So, the scientific letter that we read today was CRISPR-Cas12 based detection of SARS coronavirus 2 in Nature Biotechnology that was released on April 16, 2020, and the authors of this letter are James Broden, Jean Ding Den, Guisha Yu, Claire Fashing, Venice Sivalita, Jasmine Singh, Jen Miao, Jessica Streithost, Andrea Granados, Alicia Sotomayor Gonzalez, Kelsey Zorn, Alan Gopez, Elaine Su, Wei Gu, Steve Miller, Chow Yang Pan, Hugo Guevara, Deborah Wadford, Janice Shen, and Charles Chu.